Friday the 13th is one of the most misunderstood games for the NES. It's published by LJN, a company notorious for making games that were so bad you'd be demanding to get your money back at Toys R Us. They were responsible for some of the worst games on the NES, including the X-Men and Beetlejuice. The thing about LJN was that they weren't really a video game developer. They were a toy company that specialized in licensing big name properties like the WWF. LJN would secure the license and then they would pay someone else to make the game. The budgets were tight and the deadlines were short. I'm not sure that LJN really cared too much about how good the game was. As long as it passed Nintendo's quality check and looked marketable, LJN knew the license would be enough for them to make a profit. The best LJN games were created by companies that put in a bit more effort than the publisher required. Games like A Nightmare on Elm Street, Jaws, and Who Framed Roger Rabbit may not be as good as Mario or Zelda, but they aren't terrible either. Friday the 13th may possibly be LJN's best NES game. It was actually developed by Atlas, the developer that is well known in modern times for the critically acclaimed Persona series. Atlas actually made a number of games for LJN, including The Karate Kid and TNC Surf Designs. Atlas had the unenviable job of making a family-friendly game out of Friday the 13th, an R-rated horror series about Jason Voorhees, the vengeful ghost that stalks the shores of Camp Crystal Lake, as well as other locations like Outer Space or Manhattan. He's well known for brutally murdering his victims, but this game had to pass Nintendo's strict censors. Nintendo wouldn't allow a cross to appear on a coffin, so violent stabbings definitely weren't going to fly. What they ultimately created was an early survival horror game. While this certainly isn't Resident Evil or even Sweet Home, Friday the 13th puts you in control of six camp counselors being hunted by Jason Voorhees. Armed only with stones to throw, the counselors won't last long against Jason. You'll need to search Camp Crystal Lake to find stronger weapons, and then you may be able to turn the tables on Jason. But can you do it before he kills all of your friends? The game does a great job of building suspense. In the early game, Jason can pop up out of nowhere, and if he catches you off guard, he can quickly spell doom for your counselors. Even if you haven't seen the Friday the 13th movies, we all know from the movie Scream that Jason's mother was the original killer, and she is also represented in the game as a disembodied head that haunts the camp's creepy cave. Considering how Pamela Voorhees is killed in the movie, being a floating head feels appropriate. Sadly, critics panned Friday the 13th when it released in 1989. Complaints about the game's map being confusing are certainly valid, but some critics clearly just didn't understand the game. In Electronic Gaming Monthly's 100th issue, they said it was one of the top 10 worst console games ever made, including it on a list amongst abominations like Bubsy 3D and Plumbers Don't Wear Ties. Friday the 13th is actually way better than that. And while it doesn't appear on IGN's list of the top 100 NES games of all time, it does have a legitimate place in NES history. Modern players that attempt this game will have to deal with all of the challenges the NES is notorious for. Jason is absolutely merciless and can end your game quickly. The forest areas are confusing mazes, and the dark cavern features instant death pits. But what if I told you an easy strategy to get one of the best weapons early? What if I told you the secret to getting the best equipment from Jason's mother? And what if I told you a foolproof way to put a stop to Jason once and for all? Well, 
On today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss any new episodes. Let's get started. Alright, Friday the 13th. Before we jump into the game, we should quickly talk about our six camp counselors. They certainly aren't all created equal. Paul, Debbie, and George are all terrible. They move slowly and can't jump very high. George is slightly better because he only needs to kill two enemies before he'll start finding items, but that's only a minor advantage. These characters can attack more quickly than the others, but you really can't rapidly fire the best weapons, so this isn't important at all. Laura can move fast, but she can't jump very high, so she's not great either. Now Mark, on the other hand, is arguably the best character in the game. He moves fast, jumps high, and can even row a boat quickly. I'm going to show two different ways to beat this game, and for the easier path, Mark is a great choice. Chrissy is as good as Mark at running and jumping, but she doesn't row a boat as quickly. We really won't be doing any rowing in this game though, so that actually doesn't matter at all. Chrissy's advantage comes with being the strongest female in the game. If you intend to fight Jason's mother, she will eventually drop the sweater, a powerful armor that can only be equipped by women. So when I show the more difficult route through the game, Chrissy will be our character of choice. The other thing that we need to talk about before jumping into the game is the way that Jason moves around the map. Contrary to the way that it may seem, Jason's movements are not at all random. There are three random places where Jason can start from, but it really only feels like two different paths. Knowing which direction that Jason is moving will be key to our success in this game. In the early game, we want to avoid him, but once we get the best weapon, we'll flip the script and start hunting Jason. Jason could start in the upper right corner of the map. If he does, he'll travel left across the top of the map until he comes to the cave loop. He could also start here in the upper left, but considering how few cabins there are in the top of the map, this is essentially the same path. Jason will just start attacking sooner. Jason will then take a clockwise circle around the cave, attacking any cabins he might pass. Take notice if you get an alert that Jason is attacking over here. It's a dead giveaway that he's on this path. Once he goes around the cave, he'll follow the outside path to the left side of the lake. This is a good place to catch Jason. No matter which path he takes, it will always lead him to the left side of the lake. Jason will then attack the children's cabins and will emerge from the lake on the right side when he's finished. This is another good spot to catch up with Jason. If we know Jason started in the upper right or the upper left, then he will definitely head down around the lake to the lower forest. Jason will hang out in the lower forest for a while, then he'll reappear in front of the small cabin to the left of the woods. This is also the third and final place where Jason could start the game. Things will feel a bit different if Jason starts down here. He'll be attacking the cabins in the lower right instead of the ones in the upper left at the beginning of the game. He will follow the outer path around until reaching the upper woods, where he will cut through and then he'll head back towards the left entrance of the lake. After attacking the children's cabins again, He'll emerge from the right side of the lake, but this time he'll head up and reconnect with the original starting point, where he'll start the path all over again. Okay, let's jump into the game. We're going to beat the game twice here. This first one is the easy way. We can choose Mark or Chrissy for this path. The counselors start in random locations, so just pick whichever one puts you closer to the lake. We want to get in here on the inside track to the lake. 
That clue says we need the torch to light the fireplaces, but that's just a bad clue. The lighter is what we need to light the fireplaces, and after you kill three zombies and jump, the lighter will appear. We know now that Jason is attacking a camper in the upper left corner of the map, so he started somewhere in the top. We'll need to make note of that, but unfortunately we're not going to go save that other counselor. They are officially Jason bait. We'll only need Mark here to beat the game. Jump in front of this cabin, and when you go inside, we're going to find a message in here. This message is very important. Make sure that you take it. This cabin is the one north of the lake. This is a very important cabin. Once you find that message, and you won't find it if you didn't find the knife already, that's very important as well, we can go into the forest. If you don't have a key, make sure you jump here as you head to the left, and take the first path up. Then we're going to press up again, and we're going to exit by pressing down, and then we're going to come back in here another time. Since we have the key, we'll be able to go inside this locked cabin, where we will find another message. These messages are not just clues, it's very important that we take those so that it will trigger the appearance of the weapon that we need to find. Those are more vitamins. Make sure to pick up any vitamins that you see and you're going to head right and take the first path down and then head right again and take another path downward. That will bring us back to the lake. We're going to go back inside this same cabin where we found the first message, go all the way to the end, turn around and head back and suddenly the torch will appear. You want to take that. The torch is one of the most powerful weapons in the game. It's four times more powerful than the knife. With the torch, we'll be able to kill Jason in 32 hits, when it would take over 120 to take him out with the knife. Now that we have the torch, we simply need to fight Jason. We know that he's going to be coming here, to the left side entrance of the lake, so if we just hang out here, we will encounter Jason as soon as he comes this way. He's always going to appear on the right side of the screen, and if you see the zombie enemies start to turn around and walk off the screen, that's a dead giveaway that Jason is about to show up. To beat the game, we don't have to light any fireplaces, or fight Mrs. Voorhees, or do any of those things. The only thing we need to do is defeat Jason. And to defeat Jason, we are going to probably encounter him several times, so as soon as he pops up on the screen, just start hammering him with the torch. Now, he's going to go into the lake and start attacking the children's cabin. You could row a boat out there, enter the children's cabin, and try to rescue them, but unfortunately, there's a good chance that means that you'll die. So, instead, we're going to have to sacrifice some of those children, and we're going to come over here on the right side of the lake. We know that Jason is going to come here after he's done attacking the children, and not only that, since he started in the top, we know that he's going to travel down to the forest. Any time in this game that you move to the left, that's going to move you clockwise on the map, while moving right will always move you counterclockwise. It may seem like Jason runs away to the right all the time, but he actually follows his path, so you may need to chase him to the left when it seems like you should have to chase him to the right, and that's what we're going to have to do here. Hit Jason as many times as you can, and then we're going to chase him to the left. If he had started in the bottom, he would actually be running the other direction, so we'd be chasing him to the right. But now we're chasing him to the left, and it looks like he made it over to the forest. So if we don't encounter him here, we can try to catch up with him on the other side of the forest. So we can just kind of cut around that way, and we will encounter Jason there when he emerges on the other side. This is why that whole thing about where Jason moves is so important. You won't be able to beat him in a single move, so you want to make sure that you know which way that he's going. 
You also definitely want to avoid fighting him inside of a cabin. That's a good way to get killed. And that's it. We beat Jason, but if you've ever seen the movies, you know that you can't just kill Jason and expect him to be dead. No, no. We're going to have to fight him again. So this is day two. Here on day two, it's not as important for us to go find a weapon or anything. We just need to fight Jason. We know now that he started in the lower part of the map, so he's going to be attacking the cabins over on the right side. But he will eventually come over here to the left side of the lake, just like he always does. This time, however, whenever he gets to the right side of the lake, we know that he's going to be running to the right instead of the left. So that's very important when we chase him. And since we also know that he's following this path, we know that he's going to be coming from the upper forest, so we can hang out over here to the left of that lake path, because we know that Jason has to come this way. It looks like he's going to kill another one of our counselor friends, but unfortunately that's a sacrifice we are willing to make. As long as Jason doesn't kill Mark, we're going to be in good shape, so it doesn't really matter. We'll just hang out here and wait for Jason to come through. We'll fight some zombies. Eventually, if we kill enough zombies, we will get a new weapon, the machete. If you see the machete appear, don't pick it up. The machete is much worse than the torch. It's actually a third as effective as the torch. It would take 96 hits of the machete to kill Jason, and we just don't have that kind of time. So there it is right there, but if you want to see what it does, I'll cut over to Laura using the machete. It's actually a very effective weapon. It's good against Pamela Voorhees, Jason's mother, but it's just not good against Jason himself. We need to keep the torch. It's very important. And there he is, right on cue. We knew that Jason would show up, and now we're going to chase him over to the lake. Hopefully we can get him a second time. Don't waste any time or pause or anything whenever you're chasing Jason, or he may get away. So we'll get a second chance to deal more damage to him. Jason is a lot harder the second day, but we have a great weapon, and we still have a bunch of those vitamins, so we're in good shape. We shouldn't be too worried about losing to him. We're going to come over here on the right side of the lake. Once again, he's attacking those children's cabins, and whenever he's done, we'll have five children left. That means that if he attacks the children again on the third day and kills them, we will get a game over, so we are going to need to defeat Jason before he gets to the children's cabin on day three. Over here, we can fight him again. We had to use some of our vitamins, but we got him. But we still haven't defeated Jason, and he's even stronger. We need to beat him again on day three. Same thing though. We just need to pay attention to where the Jason alarm is going off. We can check our map and look for a flashing house. That will tell us where Jason is attacking, and give us a good idea of what he's doing. But for now, we can hang out in front of the lake. If we had to, if Jason gets to the children's cabins, we could switch to another counselor. If you go inside one of the small cabins and press start, you can switch to any of the other counselors. And we could send somebody over there to the children's cabins to fight Jason and probably get killed, but at least we wouldn't lose Mark with the torch. We know now where Jason is attacking. He's attacking in the upper left. And we can take a shortcut through the woods here. If we head over to the left, and then we go up at the first path on the left, and then take the next left and go up again, and then go left for a third time, but take the first down, that will take us through the woods and out the exit on top. So you can see where we are now. 
we could just hang out here and Jason is going to emerge from that house whenever he's done killing our friend and then we'll have him. We'll have a good shot at taking him out. We know that once Jason kills the counselor inside this house, he's going to emerge from that cabin and head to the right towards us. So we should be able to fight him here and then we should be able to chase him up that path into the loop around the cave where he will head clockwise. So we'll go in there and here he is again. So just attack him rapidly with the torch whenever you see Jason and then heading left will take us clockwise. If we don't encounter Jason right away, he probably went into a cabin, so there he is. He is in this one, and if you quickly turn around and exit the cabin, you should be able to get Jason to come outside, but there is a risk. You may end up fighting Jason inside the cabin, although he probably doesn't have a lot of health left, and there's a good chance we would be able to beat him there anyway. But that's it. We've defeated Jason for the third and final time. We did it. We beat Friday the 13th. That's really all there is to it, but what if we wanted to do all that other stuff, like light the fireplaces, or fight Mrs. Voorhees? For that, we're going to need to do another run, and this time we need to choose Chrissy. Remember that we're not going to use the torch to light the fireplaces? Instead, just like Mark, we need to defeat three zombies and then jump and we will find the lighter. Before we find the lighter, we won't be able to find any other items in the game, so that's very important. And we're also going to go and light those fireplaces, so we actually need it this time. Once we have the lighter, we need to find a knife. And we should also grab a key if we see it, or vitamins. These items that appear in the air when you're jumping around seem to appear randomly, but they are not random at all. Every time you play the game, those items will spawn in the same general locations, and once they're collected, you won't be able to pick them up with any other characters. So that's why we're just sticking with Chrissy or Mark the entire time. If you were to pick up a whole bunch of vitamins, or collect the key multiple times, whenever you switch to a different character, you won't be able to find those items again, and that can be extremely problematic. That's why I recommend just sticking with one character and getting as many items as you can with them. You may want to pick up the knife multiple times whenever you see it. That way you won't collect it by accident whenever you have a better weapon. But right now we're just going around camp trying to enter all of the big cabins on the map so that we can light their fireplaces. Lighting the fireplaces is a completely optional side quest, and they must all be lit by the same character to be able to find the flashlight. So that's the end game of lighting the fireplaces. You'll find the flashlight item, which will allow us to see a little bit better in the cave, but it's another one of those items that's just completely optional. If you enter all the big cabins, and you light some of the fireplaces with Chrissy, and then you switch to Mark, and you light the rest of the fireplaces with him, you will not find the flashlight. You just need to stay with the same character in this game. We want to make sure to pick up that message that says go into the woods. This is that same cabin that we entered in the easy route, and this time we can go over here, spawn that knife, and pick it up, but we want to head to the right this time. I'm going to show you where to find the axe, which is a weapon that's not quite as good as the torch, but we haven't found it yet, and I want to show you that weapon. So you go all the way to the right, take the first path down, and then come back up, and then go to the left and go up. We'll enter the cabin here, and we'll find a message just like we did the other time, but this time, because we went to the right and we did that down-up thing, whenever we exit the door here, we'll find the axe. 
The axe is 50% as powerful as the torch, but whenever we're fighting Pamela Voorhees, it's equally effective. You want to head left from the cabin in the woods and take the first path up, and then go left and take the first path down. So left up, left down from the cabin in the woods will take you to the top of the map. If you go right down, right down, that will take you to the exit at the bottom of the woods. So that's the way you can navigate the woods. Over here we'll find another one of those large cabins where we can light the fireplace. And we only need to light the fireplaces in the large cabins that you see on the path. The cabins inside the woods don't have fireplaces in them. Here you can see the day-night cycle in action. Whenever you exit five cabins, and the ones in the forest do count for this, it will change to evening. Now, whenever we enter and exit more cabins, it will eventually turn to night. As the day-night cycle progresses, the enemies get more dangerous. You'll notice that there will be two zombies instead of just one whenever we're on the path, and we'll start seeing some other enemies as well. Light the fireplace and make your way outside of the cabin, and we will continue on our quest. We need to hit up all of the cabins that are near the cave, so that's what we're going to do now. There's a big cabin right here. Go in, and each time you go into the big cabin, you want to go all the way to the end, then turn right. That's going to lead you to the fireplace. So just remember that. All of the big cabins are pretty much the same inside with the exception of finding those messages and things like that. Jason is currently attacking the lake, so we don't have to worry about him. And this should be the last of the large cabins. Remember, whenever you light the last fireplace, make sure to take that flashlight before you exit the screen if you don't, it could disappear and never come back. Now that we have the flashlight, we can enter the cave. We don't really need the flashlight to enter the cave though, but you can see everything very clearly in the cave since we have the flashlight. Over here through the first door, we will meet Pamela Voorhees. Try to hit her up to three times as her head floats backwards, and then you want to get as far away from Pamela as you can until she swoops down, and once she finishes swooping, that's when you want to get your attack in. You want to shoot your axe just a little bit in front of Pamela's head so that she flies into it, so you need to like lead her a bit. It should take 10 hits from the axe to finish her off. Once she's defeated, you can take the torch, and that's why we brought the axe here. If you bring the torch to Pamela, whenever you defeat her, she'll drop the machete, which is much worse. But if you bring the axe, that's another place where you can get the torch, so now that's like we have a backup torch. We could theoretically use Mark on another day and go through and get the torch just like we did before if Chrissy would die. Now that Pamela is defeated, we need to track down Jason, and we know that he just came off of the lake, so we want to head over that way. There are crows that are attacking us now because it's night, and the zombies are much more vicious. I think we can catch up with Jason by heading down to the exit of the lower forest. So we're going to head left here so that we're moving clockwise on the map. And there he is, right on schedule. So we'll attack Jason and then we're going to chase him here to the right. He should be moving this way. Hopefully he won't go into any cabins. I'm concerned that he might have went into one of these ones since we haven't encountered him. And yep. Now we can do a trick here. If you go into a cabin with another counselor, press start, switch to a different counselor, and then switch back. Whenever you exit the cabin, Jason should appear outside and you can fight him outside the cabin. 
Doing this trick does run a small risk though. There's a chance that it could fail, and if it does, you might end up having to fight Jason inside the cabin, which could be a disaster. I recommend using this trick on day one and two, but maybe don't do it on day three if you have an expendable counselor that you can just sacrifice and wait for Jason outside of the house. Now that we are on day two, we can go back and fight Pamela Voorhees again. This time when we fight her, she's going to drop the sweater. You don't have to fight her on day one to be able to get the sweater on day two, so fighting her on day one is completely optional even if you are interested in getting the best items. You could theoretically just get the torch like we did on the easy path, take out Jason right away, and then pursue Pamela on day two. You also don't need the flashlight. You just won't be able to see the door there. You just need to press up when you're in that location, and you won't need the flashlight at all. Pamela is a good bit more difficult this time. Sometimes when she swoops down, she'll do two swoop attacks, so you need to watch out for that. Just keep hitting her with the torch. Remember to kind of lead it in front of her a bit, and make sure to take the sweater. The sweater is amazing armor that can only be equipped by female characters, and that's why we're playing this route as Chrissy. Jason, of course, is a mama's boy, so he wouldn't be fooled by a male character wearing the sweater, but when he sees a girl wearing it, well, suddenly he doesn't deal as much damage as well as other enemies in the game are also affected by the sweater, so I don't know how that entirely works. But the sweater is awesome. You see it makes Chrissy like flashing whenever she's wearing it. And we're going to head over to the right side of the lake so that whenever Jason is done killing the children there, we can take him out. Now that we have the sweater, he's going to be a lot easier. So the sweater is something that might be worth getting, but fighting Pamela is probably harder than fighting Jason. You might just want to take out Jason and do the easy path, but if you want a complete playthrough and you want to get all the best stuff, the sweater is a nice item to get. We will lose the game if Jason takes out all of the children, so we do need to avoid that, but until there are five or fewer left, we don't need to worry about it at all. Whenever there's more than five children, we can consider them expendable. Let's chase Jason. We know he's going to go down this path and head up to the right. So we're traveling counterclockwise now because we're moving right. And where did he go? Where are you at, Jason? There he is. Hammer him with the torch. And that's it. Jason has been defeated on day two. All we need to do now is take out Jason's mother on day three and get the best weapon in the game. And then we can fight Jason one last time. Here on day three, we're just going to make our way back to the cave so that we can fight with Pamela again. We're heading over here to the left because that takes us counterclockwise on the map, and we should find the path that leads us over to the cave. Oh, okay. Jason's over here right now, so we'll get some early beats on him. That's no big deal. And I bet he's going to follow us. Yep. He's taking the path that's leading him around the cave right now. If we would head left, we would encounter Jason again, so that's the direction he's going, but instead we want to take out Pamela here, so we're just going to go into the cave, jump over those two pits, which are instant death, and enter the door. Green Pamela Voorhees is her most difficult form. She does the double swooping attack a lot more, and even has a triple swoop attack in this form. You'll need to be extra careful, Wait for her to attack, and just get your attacks in when you can. It's very difficult to avoid her if you're nearby whenever she starts attacking, so you want to try to stay as far away as possible, 
and attack her cautiously. Make sure to plan your shots. You can't have two torches on the screen at the same time, so you want to make sure that your throws are accurate. You don't just want to be mashing the button whenever you're fighting Pamela. And once she's defeated, make sure to take the pitchfork. It's the best weapon in the game. The pitchfork doesn't deal more damage to Jason than the torch does, but it does attack more quickly and it penetrates enemies. So yeah, the pitchfork is awesome. Now that we have all of the best equipment, if you're feeling brave, you may try to take on Jason inside one of the cabins. So that's what we're going to do now. It is still a risk though. You're much better off trying to fight Jason on the path and just using that counselor swap trick here to try to get Jason to come outside. If you forget how to do that, you just want to switch to one of your other counselors that isn't in this cabin and then switch back to Chrissy and then exit the cabin and hopefully Jason will come outside. If you're fighting him in the cabin, you can dodge, but you can't dodge whenever you're attacking. So keep that in mind. You mostly just want to attack him quickly though when you have the pitchfork, and then you should be able to come outside and finish him off if you didn't fight to the death inside the cabin. Let's chase him over towards the lake. We know he's headed back that way. And if he goes inside of another cabin, we are going to use that counselor swap trick. We don't want to risk fighting him again. Our health is getting fairly low, even though we do have the sweater right now. We know he's going to come back this way. If he does go into the lake, we can chase him down on a rowboat. He shouldn't have very much health left. Where are you at, Freaky Jason? We're ready for you. On day three, Jason does move faster, and if you're down to your very last counselor, whenever you fight him, he might not run away. He may actually just fight you to the death. So in some ways, that actually might be good. So you definitely shouldn't be worried if your counselors die. Fighting Jason with a pitchfork makes him super easy to defeat. And that's it. We've done it. We've completed Friday the 13th and got all of the important items. Well, I hope this video was able to help you finally defeat Jason and put an end to the haunting of Camp Crystal Lake. If it did, make sure to give it a like, and make sure to subscribe for more videos. Because evil never truly dies. So that's why we'll be back again next week, with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.